Hello fellow space enthusiasts. There are some who believe that the real reason there were few good photos of Armstrong on the moon is because of a grudge on Aldrin's part at being denied the historical first step onto the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Aldrin was on the surface for about one hour and 45 minutes, during which time he didn't take a single photo of Armstrong. The six photos that he took that do include all or part of Armstrong's extravehicular mobility unit are as a result of Aldrin taking a photo of something else and Armstrong just being in the image. During Project Gemini it had been the pilot that had exited the spacecraft and walked in space whilst the commander had stayed inside monitoring the spacecraft systems. In all of the spacewalking uh, activities in the Gemini program and in Apollo it was not the commander who did the spacewalk, but it was uh, the junior person. Even on Apollo 9, it had been the lunar module pilot who had gone out to perform the EVA. Aldrin expected this practice to continue on Apollo 11, with the lunar module pilot having the primary role, and for him to be out first. The main difference this time was the fact that both men were going outside of the spacecraft. This raised the question of who should go out first. During the first few planning meetings for the moonwalk, this matter was not raised. It was only after Aldrin began pressing to have it made official that it should be the lunar module pilot that the matter became an issue that needed settling. As Conrad put it, the matter never came up until Buzz brought it up. And, uh, and we were a very competitive group of people and, uh, and I felt it was a natural thing to put forth the points of view that represented where I was coming from. While this question had hung in the air, it had led to some tension between the two men. Aldrin recalled, At one time I made the observation to Neil that I felt, regardless how I felt or he felt, we needed to have a decision made on this. Walt Cunningham would say of this, We always felt like it was an unnecessary conflict that was created by Buzz. Gene Cernan was even more critical. I found Aldrin's arguments both offensive and ridiculous. Ever since learning that Apollo 11 would attempt the first moon landing, Buzz had pursued this particular effort to sneak his way into history. To be fair to Aldrin, Armstrong being first out onto the surface was not always a foregone conclusion. On the 11th of March, one newspaper wrote, Dr. John W. Small, Chief of the Space Agency's Lunar Surface Projects Office, said, Buzz Aldrin Jr. will probably be the first man to step onto the surface of the moon. Another newspaper went even further on the 6th of April when they wrote, who will be the first man to set a foot on the moon? That's the big question space watchers are asking. And more and more of them are coming up with the same answers. Edwin Eugene Buzz Aldrin Jr. The article went on to say, Various NASA officials have been reported as saying that the flight plan, as drawn, calls for Aldrin to exit first. This original plan was backed up by Kraft, who later noted, In all the early flight plans and timelines, it was the lunar module pilot. After an unnecessary delay making the decision, NASA management finally settled on Armstrong. This whole saga has led to some to turn Aldrin into the bad guy by accusing him of selfishly refusing to take Armstrong's photo on the moon, as seen in this newspaper article. Richard Underwood, the NASA photography expert, stated, There's a simple explanation. Aldrin was really mad at Armstrong for seizing the honour of being the first to walk on the moon. Aldrin decided to get even with him. There was no way he was going to take Armstrong's picture. This was a personal theory that Underwood would peddle for the rest of his life. In answer to this accusation, Aldrin said, To have somebody say that might have been intentional. How do you come up with a non-confrontational argument against that? I mean, that was just such a divisive observation. And Neil and I were never in the least divisive. So is there any basis for Underwood's accusation? Could Aldrin have had a grudge against Armstrong? Paul Anne, a former public affairs officer for NASA, had stated in an interview before the mission that it was Aldrin who was originally going to be first out, but then Armstrong had exercised his prerogative as commander to pull rank and replace Aldrin as the first man out. If Aldrin had thought that this was indeed true, then this could have given him a reason to hold a grudge. The truth is, though, that although Armstrong didn't rule himself out of being the first man on the moon, he played absolutely no part in the decision of who would go out first. Was there a dispute between you two over who should be the first on the moon, and how was that selection made? I had zero input, no input whatever, into that decision. 
At the end of June 1969, Deke Slayton had gone on the record to deny the claim by Annie, making it clear that it had been a management decision with no input by the astronauts. Aldrin, in public at least, seems to have accepted the decision, stating, Neil was the first out of the spacecraft, and that's the way it was decided, and it was based on seniority, and I'm happy with that. It's other people that want to make a big thing about it. It's other people who say, didn't that bother you? And now I have to deny that it bothered me. It was Aldrin's understanding at the time that the decision of who would go out first was based according to the explanation given to him by his boss, Stig Slayton, on the fact that it was easy for the guy on the left to go out first because of the way the hatch opened inwards. So there was no reason for Aldrin to be mad at Armstrong over this decision. Something borne out by the fact that apart from Underwood, the general consensus is that Aldrin had no grudge. As he later stated, I'm a military person and when I'm given a mission, I carry it out. And my mission, long before the flight, a month before, was to follow Neil outside the spacecraft. And that's what I did. And it just would not have been appropriate for the commander to have stayed in the lunar module while the junior person uh, went out and did, did this great symbolic things of uh, stepping out onto the lunar surface first. John Yembrek, a NASA spokesman, refutes Underwood's claim, stating that it's 100% not true. He added that there are no good photos of Armstrong, because that was Neil's job. It wasn't a conspiracy. Kraft was even more adamant on the subject, saying, No, no, no. I don't think Aldrin would have been that devious. I would not accuse him of that. Between them, both Armstrong and Aldrin only took one photo of Michael Collins during the entire mission. It should also be pointed out that Aldrin took this photo of Armstrong inside the lunar module after the moonwalk. On top of this, the first photo taken during Apollo 11, just over an hour after launch, was of Neil Armstrong by Buzz Aldrin. Not exactly the actions of a man boiling inside with resentment and determined not to take any photos of his commander. It is also clear from listening to all the voice comms during the mission that there was no animosity on Aldrin's part towards Armstrong. I'm sure I could push it in farther, but uh, it's hard for me to bend down farther than that. Dan, I didn't know you could throw so far. You can really throw things a long way up here. So why would Underwood make such a claim? Underwood's approach to training seems very different to Aldrin's no-nonsense approach, so it is entirely possible that this led to a clash of personalities. Aldrin is known to have ruffled the feathers of a few people, and so Underwood's relaxed and self-confessed fun attitude to training may have been jarred by the highly motivated and serious nature of Aldrin, leading to Underwood taking a dislike to him. It would seem that for someone in charge of the photographic objectives of the mission, and said that his job was to work with the astronauts to be sure they bring back great photographs, Underwood would find Aldrin a very useful scapegoat to cover over the biggest PR blunder of the entire Apollo program. It was not the first time that he had been caught lacking in imagination when it came to photographic opportunities. When it came to a photo of the Earth from the vicinity of the Moon during the mission of Apollo 8, Underwood explained, the taking of a picture of an Earth rise was not at all considered to be something important. It was really not any goal at all of the project as it was outlined. The Earth rise photo taken during Apollo 8 is without doubt one of the most significant of the old Apollo program, and yet Underwood failed to realise its significance. It should also be remembered that from the 865 exposures taken during Apollo 8, there is not one single photo of any of the men who made the first journey to the moon. On top of this, he stated after Apollo 11 that no photos existed of Armstrong on the moon, something that's been proven to be incorrect. This declaration was made after Underwood, the photographic expert, had studied the returned images from the mission, and it was a line he pushed for years afterwards in interviews. Buzz was mad at Neil, and didn't take his picture, got hundreds of the other guys who walked on the moon, none of number one. Underwood was of course wrong on this point, because even though they are not of the greatest quality, there are in fact seven images containing Armstrong in some way or another. Sir Edmund Hillary spent less than 20 minutes at the peak of Mount Everest when he conquered the tallest mountain in the world with Tenzing Norgay in 1953. Despite the short stay at the top and the dangerous conditions, he was able to photograph Norgay holding the British Union flag against the sky that rapidly changed from light blue to black. Perhaps this precedent of capturing the moment most accurately matched 
the lack of a photograph of Armstrong on the moon, with only one camera, a very short time available, and a lack of training on the use of the camera on Norgay's part. Hillary took all the photos. In all of the years that have followed the scaling of Everest, there has never once been any suggestion that a photo of Hillary doesn't exist because Norgay held a grudge against him. If the fact that it was always Aldrin's photo that was used annoyed Armstrong, then he could have done something about it. After getting back from the moon, he knew that there was at least one photo of himself on the surface, something he stated as far back as 1974 when he confirmed, I believe there is one picture with me in the background. In reality though, Armstrong got back from the moon, fulfilled his duties to NASA, and then got on with his life in the humble and modest way that he conducted his whole life, shunning the fame and not seeking the limelight. All of the emphasis regarding Aldrin's so-called grudge ignores a very obvious question. Why didn't Armstrong ask Aldrin to take his photo? As Cernan pointed out, myself, if I had been in Neil's place, I would have said, Buzz, take a picture of me, quick. For those who say that Aldrin didn't need to ask, that he should have simply just took one, they ignore the conditions that Aldrin was working under and that he was spring-loaded to carry out his tasks and not divert away from the plan. He was no tourist enjoying the sights with a carefree attitude to snap off photos of his companion at will. As Aldrin noted, there was certainly a gun barrel vision of focusing in on what you were supposed to be doing, rather than being innovative and creative. Instead of blaming Aldrin, maybe it should be remembered that Armstrong could have asked for a couple of photos to be taken. If like Cernan stated, Armstrong wasn't about to ask for his photo to be taken, then that's not Aldrin's fault. The final word on this matter should go to Aldrin, who has been so unfairly tarnished by Richard Underwood. Aldrin stated, When I got back and someone said, there's not any of Neil, I felt so bad about that. What are your views on this? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for future videos and thanks for watching. Hey, that's great.